What's cracking, everybody? Let me see. Live and direct. It is your boy Flacco. Come on, man. I'm trying to play with this, this stuff over here. Let me see how I can, I can fix some things, man. Let me see how I look. I did a little background. Let me see how I look. You watching Chucky? Look. Yeah, seven people watching. I see you guys. Hold on, guys. What's up, Romo? Romo? What's up, man? Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's coming out good. All right, cool. All right, let me close this out. What's cracking, everybody? Let me see. Right on time. Doggy Style Car Club. What's up with my boy, man, right there? Doggy Style, man. What up, homie? He's in the call about six o'clock. I just got off the phone with him. I figured I'd tap in about 15 minutes early. So that went for it gives everybody enough time to get on, man. I asked him about Spokio, believe it or not, from Salas. Yeah, I, I, that'd be cool to get Phantom on, man. He, he, the thing with uh, their phones is that like they're like every 15 minutes, and it's hard to get them for a long duration. I'll, I'll work on that though. Mom, Shadow Pit, what's good with it, man? Where? Let me show you. Right there. Is that a spider? Yeah. Where's the spider? Right there. I don't know. Let me touch it. See if it's spider. Mm -hmm. Right there. Hold on. I'm live right now. It's a spider. Is it? Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry. That thing? Okay. That's not a spider. You're just crazy. Look at. That's not a spider. Don't touch it then if it's... What's up with it, Simons? What's up, John I'm Adams? I'm joking. What is in here? Because something just vibrated in here. Come on, I'm going to live right now. Is that a spider? I'll be on that, man. He's, he's going to call... Leave it alone. Go he's going to call in about go 15 away, minutes. Mom, it's not real. It's fake. No, it's not. You got the baby right here. She's, she thinks it's a spider right here. No, it's not fake, Mom. It's good for no, toys. That's a real spider, babe. It died, though. If, I'm trying to focus no, on this too, babe. You got. Mom, it's just fake. If he gets his latest it's sentence real. overturned, does he get a release date? Yeah, he gets a release date. Go, go, go. Leave it alone. He'll probably be up real quick, believe it or not. No. Baby Boy Lokes from Antioch. Now, I don't know him. I mean, you guys could ask him. He's going to be on about 15 minutes, man. You know what I mean? Why would not be a moderator on Rojo's channel? You guys like to stir shit up, huh? <laughs> they, they no issues. You hope he calls drunk. Look at the drunk investor, man. What's up, Shadow Pit? 55 people up in here, man. Yeah, eventually we're going to get there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I want you know. I don't beef with nobody, bro. To be honest with you, I I, I may have a disagreements or with certain people, but if I beef, it's 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 a whole different ball game, bro. Putting S and Y gangs on the main line. I don't. Let me see. Who's this dude right here? <laughs> Chilling in those side, ordering a pizza. That's what's up, man. Dan, I got to give you a call, man. I can't eat right now when I'm on a live, baby. Thank you, though. He's in a cell. He's in a cell. What's up, baby? I can't eat when I'm on a live, babe. Big Flacco organ checking in. Yeah, you can ask Trey questions when he comes in, man. Sorry, but sorry, if I'm a little distracted right now. This second, sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't want to hear about other channels, man. You're right. Hey, gracias, Shadow Pit. There it is, there, right there.
Now I was trying to eat before um, I did a lot, but the cooking got was a little bit delayed. I've had people complain for eating on lies, man. Come on, you want to say hi? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. There you go. Go, babies. I'm not, I don't know what the hell that virus, punk, virus punk, what he's talking about. I'm not fucking with that. I am going to be on with Snoop. I tap in a little bit early to give enough time so people can come on here. Because like, you know, he could, he can only come on maybe for like an hour possibly. So it's better for me to come on now because not everybody taps in at the same time. Let's go with it though. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty interesting, man. He goes, what are we going to talk about? Go, whatever you want. Let me see what's up. We got 81 people up in here. He says he's going to call exactly at 6 o'clock. I'm going to have to hit the mute button because what's been happening is when I uh, answer the phone calls, believe it or not, the GTL, this is what whoa, whoa, whoa. that motherfucker is copyright. I got copyrighted over that shit, man. I swear to God. What's up, Lulos, man? Nah, most definitely. What are you trying to say? You want to sing? They want you to sing. Can you sing or no? Huh? <laughs> I haven't heard anything about that virus. So when I do get them on, though, make sure you guys can tell me if you guys can hear right. I gotta just go like this. It's hard, it's hard for me to see, guys. My, my, is that right? Drake, oh, man. Lame double O. One, two, tapping in. 93 people tapping in. He'll be calling exactly at 6 o'clock, guys. So you guys have your questions lined up, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, Bottle 36. Jim Tan Laundry. <laughs> man. So, yeah, I've been uploading a lot of the old videos. And I've been adding, like, a little bit of uh, music tracks lately. For you guys to check out, man, just for the fuck of it. From Lindsay, though. You know who I know from Lindsay was a, a cat named Spider. You know Spider? He's probably about the same age as me in his 40s. I forgot his name, though. He was in the shoe back in the, uh, I think, mid-90s. Hey, appreciate that, uh, P. Loco. Appreciate that. I need to get glasses, guys. My, my sight's getting bad, period. Green lit LA. 76 people tapped in. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, so we're going to, uh, we'll probably start working on the uh, part. We'll probably redo number two. Yeah, he man, he, yeah, he can't rap, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got hell of shit, man. You know what I mean, I, I could, I could do a song right after this. If you guys tell me it's like a concept, I'll come up with a hook and a, and a track for hella fast, man. What's so important about Snoop? Um, he's interesting. He's interesting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody knows he created a movement. 
and he's really not told too much. He's he's had he's been on a couple videos, but not too many. So you guys have inside, you know. What I'm saying people are now getting to hear how he talks, how he thinks, and some of his experiences and whatnot. Is that right? I don't know. Yes, it should be coming out pretty soon. What's up, bud? What's up? What's up with the uh, Tone Loco? <laughs> yeah, it should be coming out this week, as a matter of fact. So I'll let you guys know where to watch it. I don't even know what the, what the hell I said that day, to be honest with you. It was like kind of nerve wracking a little bit. Hey, babe, put this, babe. What? Come here. If I don't eat this, there's gonna be flies all over it. So can you put it like in there somewhere? Okay, yes. Thank you, babe. Uh, there would not be flies in here. I know the door was open earlier. Remember I told you? <laughs> you sat there with it open. Oh, man. House of Dragon going to start at 6. I don't even know nothing about the House of Dragon. <laughs> Supposedly his ex-girlfriend exposed his identity, and then when, when people found out, OG Triple OG was found and handled. What's What's his alleged identity? I haven't even heard it yet, to be honest with you, man. I'll, I'll tap in and, and check it out. What did he say about Gunner? I'm gonna, hold on. I'm going to look at something real quick, guys. Life is hard. You know what's weird, man, is the ones that are saying that right now is you guys just barely started your channel today, man. That's the funny part about it, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Starting rumors on my channel, man. We've got any moderators up in here, man? Stand your toes, man. I'm cool with that, man. I'm not, I'm not with all that, bro. You guys start your channel that day. I already know what time it is, man. You, you guys start one. Just come in here and start shit, man. Yeah, get rid of them. You got a you got a, a, a the wrench, right? No, not you, bro. I don't think you are. No, nah, man. You've had you've had yours for six years. Nah, nah, not you, bro. <laughs> oh shit it said kurt wise me and snoop would be a tag team man who cloud chasing man who cloud chasing they um nah i don't who knows brother raider how you doing brother i was gonna i was gonna call you but i get busy bro Let me see. I had a couple moderators right now that people I know. Cool. Okay, you've been around for a minute, but <laughs> let me see. Man, you guys, man, shit. Oh, no, no. Okay, not, that's all good, homie. Don't even trip, man. <laughs> man, you know what's weird is every time I have a live, there's different people, man, on here, man, that I haven't seen for a minute. You know, sometimes people just want to speak on stuff just to just to get out there, man. It's like, look, it's like I, it's like I did a, I did a diss track to Neil Desire, right? 
it has nothing to do with their beef. It has nothing to, for me to do with, uh, you know, defending Savage or any of that. It has to do with you don't disrespect the dead, bro. That's just my personal opinion, man. Like, you know, the way you disrespect the dead is you be about your action, continue to take out more of your op if that's what it's about. You know what I mean? So, you know, I just think that having a family and all that, when someone's took out, man, you just, there's certain things you just stay away from, man. Anthony Vigil, you came in with a whole lot of energy, huh? What happened, bro? Did you lock it up the first time you went, or what? <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I did. A, I did a hard one. I decided to pick up the volume a little bit, but I went. I went. I went in on man. I can ask him that. You know what I mean? He's gonna call any second. This is right. Homeboy right here is right. Exactly. 128 people up in here. What's up with the rich DM650? If anybody wants to tap into, man, you're more than welcome to tap into, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out from Chico Calif Chico Califas. Man, let me see some. All right, Jimmy, that's you, uh, Rich, because you just came in out of nowhere. Let me see if that's Rich for sure. Sean Blue, I see you, Rich DM. Oh, that's Rich for sure. That's Rich. My bad. Okay, hey, gracias for that. I got your message, brother. Free Donnie. Let me see. You know what? There's been like there's more battles than wars. The only time that I know of of a war was when I, I kind of de I declared war on the Wolf Packs at that one time in two thousand six. You know what I'm saying? And that they weren't going to walk the lines in Tracy. You know what I'm saying? So, and it turned into, it had nothing to do with the woods or skinheads or any of those cats, but it just, it turned into a racial thing. You know what I mean? And the cops were playing dirty. You know what I'm saying? They were playing dirty as fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? They, they, uh, they ended up stabbing a fucking dude in a wheelchair, man, on, on leave. That happened. Some, some, uh, woods did. And then they brought about four homeboys in and they brought like 50 woods into the cafeteria and the fucking homeboys got rushed, eh? They set him up bad. I, you know, the homeboy Happy from uh, from Hayward came in with a report because that's that's what he was in the hole for. Now, I ain't heard, I ain't heard from Johnny for a minute, man. <laughs> Full sixty, no troll zone. You can have to, you don't have to exercise if you're in a wheelchair. What's good with the roll six five zero? If you have certain conditions and you report it, you know what I'm saying um, it's going to be. If you know it's a valid cons a reason, then they're not going to have to work out, man. You know what I'm saying, but if you know they're trying to utilize it, now nah, you're going to have to get out there. If you're in a wheelchair, you can't do nothing. Come on, man. Turco Ortiz was cracking. Sundown's up in here, man. The OG Rick Riley. I heard he broke his phone and got his phone back. Juju's up in here, man. What's cracking, man? Corona. That's it. I'm hungry, man, guys, but. <laughs> yeah, you should be calling right now. You got to remember, every live is called about what time? 605, 608, 612? Which happy? Those in Solano. 
Let me see. Hold on. 18137, you was with us? I'm putting mute, guys. What's up? You got Snoop on here, man. We up, we live now, bro. We got 158 people up in here already. Okay, that's what's up, man. We had a couple questions for you, man. Let me see. Ask Snoop about when he knocked out the guy's teeth in North Sac, then knocked out a cop. To say, okay, we're going to get to that story pretty soon. You know what I mean? What are you, you knocked the dude's teeth out, then you knocked the cop out the same night. Yeah, we're going to get to that. <laughs> I didn't know. You didn't tell me that. You didn't tell me that about that story, bro. Okay. Because I'm not the most intimidating looking person, you know. I, I I second that, man. I I thought the same thing when I first met him. Um, thought he was like he looked like, like yeah, seriously. He have, had like a little. I don't, I don't have visible tattoos. I usually have you know blonde streaks in my hair. You get blonde streaks. Know, earrings and whatnot. So. Yeah, you had little bangs back in the days, bro. What happened? You had bangs back then. When we were on the yard together. Yeah. I used like Bax, he's a Backstreet Boy, bro, for real. Hey, you know what? I, tell us about the last time you really got lost a fight. What happened? When's the last time you lost a fight? Uh, I haven't lost a fight in years, man. The last fight I lost, I, you know what? To be honest with you, I can't even remember. Hmm. It's been quite some time ago. Okay, someone was asking that earlier. They're like, man, they go, we know he can fight, man. We would like to hear, like, to humanize you a little bit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, the time yeah, that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mean, don't time... get me wrong. I've lost fights. You know? I just haven't lost a fight in a long time. Yeah. Someone had a good question. What do you think about them uh, putting you guys and other, other SMY groups, movements, whatever you want to call them, some are gangs, some are movements, whatever they may be, right? Out there in the uh, main, GP main lines. I mean, looking at, at it from a, a genuine perspective, I recognize that CDCR are enticing violence. You know, I don't know if people are aware, but like on the mainline GP, they established something called the into hostilities. Yeah, they when a lot of the um, <clears throat> what ended up happening is they um, they did a campaign. Wherein in 2011, we all uh, staged a protest, uh, which was uh, regarded as a peaceful protest. And we did a hunger strike in order to challenge, you know, the many atrocities that CDCR was, uh, was, was um, you know, they, they, they were uh, putting on to us. You know, the uh, Geneva Convention, they recognized and acknowledged the fact that solitary confinement was in fact used as a means of torture. So when that uh, occurred, and that was like 2009, 2010, um, you know, word came down uh, from Pelican Bay um, that... Uh, they had, um, they were contacted by human rights advocates that, you know, were against torture. And so when that transpired, um, the CDC had no choice other than to negotiate stuff of compromise. But I say that because uh, they did it again in 2013. And what ended up happening is, is they had to start kicking people out of the shoe. 
So, you know, as you know, anybody that was recognized as a prison gang member or an associate, they were validated and placed in solitary confinement, you know, indeterminately, which means they're never getting out. So you've got some brothers that were in solitary confinement for 10, 20, even up to 30 years. So those guys ended up going into the step down program and they were finally kicked out to the main lines. The truth is, you know, Sacramento doesn't want, you know, people to be out of the shoe. So what they did was they, you know, navigated through certain processes and they came up with a diabolical plan to wage war within the prison system. Because, you know, so far on the mainline general population, the end of hostilities, it's working. So what it is, is that, you know, these other group segments are finally side by side fighting for a universal cause. And what that universal cause is, is abolition. So now you have prisoners, you know, inmates or convicts or whatever you want to call it, that are coming side by side in solidarity to become abolitionists. Yeah. So now they're going, you know, uh, uh, you know, pro activists. So you have these uh, these um, prisoners that are this call is being recorded. Conscientious to you know uh, torture and, and and their understanding if they come together and. Um, you know, form a, a, a united front that they do have the ability to challenge the system. Guess it, guess it's in the comments. So what Sacramento did, what CDC did, was say, well, you know what? Because, I mean, a lot of people don't know that these SNYs are the new GP. The SNY yards are more violent than the GPs now. You don't hear about, you know, much about the general population yards anymore because they pretty much got it figured out. Whereas on the S and Y yards, these guys are just rambunctious and they're running amok. And basically it's every man for himself. So it becomes pretty pretty diabolical, you know? Yeah. So what they want to do is they want to merge these different yards together and create catastrophe. It's gonna be war. So, I mean, how do I feel about it? Um, I mean, of course, you know, I'm prepared. I'm always, you know, ready to engage. But I look at the bigger picture. And I just think that it's atrocious, to, you know, to be honest about it. And I can go on and on, but yeah, I think it's wrong. Um, and I understand the bigger picture. And I don't think that people really recognize what's in front of them. They don't, they don't see the bigger picture, and I think it's, it's sad, to be honest about it. Guess who's in the comments? Sm Sm okay. Smiley's in the comments. Oh, that's man. What's up, little bro? That's what he said, little bro, blah, that's blah. little bro right there, man. I told him to tap in, man. I said, hey, hit that link and jump on, man, if you yeah, want. Yeah, man. I, I said my love to you, playboy. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute, Smiley Long. If you don't want to jump on, uh, Smiley, uh, hit, I'm gonna give you a. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot this. Uh, uh. No, you know, I would like to do real quick before we, you know, get into in, any topics. Let's answer some of these questions that some of these showmen got in there. Oh, I've been, I've been shooting you all there, man. I was talking to my wife a moment ago, and she was telling me that um, there was some pretty, uh, pretty good questions right there. Oh yeah, there's always good questions, man. Um, well, I'm putting my email just in case he doesn't want to tap in. I told him you could tap in. I put a link up there. Anybody can tap in, man. You kind of got to get into a better zone. Am I cutting out? Uh, you're going off and on. Okay, you know what it is? Because where my let me see. No, I'm right next. I should be good right here, bro. But you sound like a robot, kind of. Hold on. How do I sound now? Uh, Can you guys hear me? Talk to me. What's up okay, with? There you go. Okay, okay. Someone said to ask you. Ask someone said to ask you about the time when you fought Reese. Man, hold on. Can you hear me now? Oh, Jack, I can hear you. Okay, okay. 
could be my phone, man. My phone be tripping. I may have to move a little bit. Okay, so what, what did somebody ask? Someone asked you about the time you fought Reese. Did, did you lose that fight? Did I fought Reese? Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't say I lost that fight. I mean, I was shit-faced drunk, and he, he was wrestling, and at that time, I didn't have any wrestling skills. But I would say that I, I beat him as far as the hands are concerned. He was upset because his little cousin was a boxer named, uh, they called him uh, Boxer Rick. And I beat the crap out of him. He kept challenging me, and I didn't know why. And so after that happened, uh, Reese was a younger homie of mine. He waited until I was drunk and uh, challenged me, so I lit him up. You know, I four piece him. But he rushed me to the ground. So I would say he probably be, he beat me in the wrestling, but I beat him in the uh, in the hands. That's 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 okay. Fair assessment. So, so but of course that's when I was eight. That's when I was eighteen years old. I'm sure he knows that I'm gonna obliterate him now. You know. <laughs> someone, that's a good question, though. someone said, "Has has Snoop ever fought Scrappy the Butcher?" First of all, Scrappy, uh, a.k.a. Alex T. is, he has me on what's called an 812 enemy list. So he will never, ever want to come across me. As far as fighting, the guy Scrappy is like five foot two. Okay? This call is being recorded. 30 pounds. I was literally fucking grab him by his neck lift him up and slam him on his bald head. So no. Um, hey, there will never be a fight between me and that schmuck. Hey, Smiley's going to try to tap in. Hey, Smiley, hit the link. It's going to ask you for your name. You put your name and enter the studio. It's pretty simple. Um, what are the questions? Let me see. Does, okay, there, yeah, one, okay, can someone put uh, – uh, if you guys have Snoop's book, can someone put the link up for me? Someone's been asking this question like four times, and someone that knows you. Okay. It's uh, asking if riders are allowed to indulge in drugs, and what are the consequences if caught if they are caught? Um, as a as a certified combate, you know, it's pretty much you're you're a man. You know, if you want to indulge in, uh, you know, narcotics, you know, that's totally up to you. Now, me personally, I don't encourage it. You know, I, I, I try my best not to, um, I try to rid my body of toxins. So, you know, I watch what I eat, you know. I make sure that I exercise. I drink plenty of water. Um, I do like indulging in cannabis every now and then when I have a chance. But as far as uh, doing drugs, I don't encourage anybody to do drugs. But if somebody wants to, you know, put that type of stuff in their body, then so be it, you know? Okay. As long as they don't, you know, get all tweaked out and start, you know, doing stuff that's contrary to, you know, right or law, you know? I really don't care what anybody does. It's up to them. We don't have any consequences. Mm. <clears throat> good one, good one. For doing drugs, I mean. What else? I'm trying to get Smiley up in here, man, because fucking we used to fucking jig cat out. Before we do, let's answer some of these questions that so these viewers have, okay. have uh, they just, you know first. what they keep on asking the yeah, keep on asking about the dude you fought. They said little local fight in, in CYA. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh little local, that's my little that's my that's my boy right there. He's talking about Adrian Aldaco. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I knocked the seat out. Okay, let me see. But one thing I will tell you though, he lived up to his name. Oh. And, you know, Adako was complete with the festivities. And what happened with him was, you know, he was uh, from uh, Mario Frank Lone Boulevard. And so when I came to YA, I was representing Centro. Yeah. Centro was basically the downtown region. And back then in the 80s, if you came to uh, YA and you were from, you know, Oak Park or Frank Lawn or okay, the Gardens... You basically would represent Southside Sacramento. If you were from Southside Park, 
Cinco or Centro, who represent Centro. And so me representing Centro, this guy Asia is representing Frank Long. And so, uh, yeah, I confronted an inconsistency and, uh, you know, he was uh, indulging in inappropriate activities. So I ended up knocking his teeth out. But uh, he never backed down. Okay. He never backed down, man. Have He's you, a pretty tough kid. Someone asked, have you ever met any Hells Angels inside? I can't hear you. Have you ever met any Hells Angels inside? Still can't hear you. Have you ever met any Hells Angels inside? You're, you're, you're going off and on. Man, yeah, hold on. Let me see if this Your helps. Is messed up. Have you ever met any Hells Angels inside? Yeah. Yeah, I've met many Hells Angels. I, it's interesting because, you know, like the writer movement, those angels have never been liked. Because they were basically uh, anti-prison gang. So to my understanding, the Aryan Brotherhood, they wanted them to contribute, you know, and, and basically monetize the, uh, the opportunity. And what I mean by that is they wanted financial contributions from the uh, House Angels, and the House Angels basically told them to fuck off. So when they got to level fours and other established uh, uh, yards, the whites would attack them. So I met many uh, Hells Angels and got along with with many of them. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Um, either they come in and don't wrap their patch, or they uh, they don't get the back to vein line, right? Yeah. They were functioning on like the 50 50 yards. Okay. That makes sense because. Um, this call is being recorded. I know they had issues in Folsom. They got off like in the 80s. I know that. There was, there was, a, at one time, there was a little bit of an alliance, but then I think there was also issues because of. Uh, you had Michael Thompson, as you guys already know. He ended up. Uh, and they, there was a lot of shit that was going on in the 80s, man. About They were trying to contract him out. Michael Thompson ended up testifying one of their cases. Yeah, yeah. He became, he became a. Uh, um, he became a um, working for the prosecution for the Aryan Brotherhood. Yep. Thanks for the answer, Snoop. JD Ryder. Let me see. Anyone got links to Snoop's book? Can anybody put that up for me, guys? I appreciate it. If anybody could put that that um, book book up for me, let me know, man. Juju, if you could look it up, look up books, uh, uh, Snoop's book. Post it in the link for us, man. There's also what are the questions they have? Let me see. I want to answer some of these questions for the viewers. Okay, so Vado 36th Street, Franklin. Did, do you know anybody from there? Yeah, I know plenty of guys. Uh, BC 36 is the first established Vado for Frank Long. Before they were Franklin Boulevard, they were from BC 36. I know a bunch of dudes from BC 36. Okay. You know, one of the guys that, you know, used to be a good friend of mine was... Um, he was basically uh, the leader of uh, the generation below me, and uh, his name was Troopy. Okay. Uh, Juan Gutierrez. He was from Franklin Boulevard. He used to be a good friend of mine, but uh, you know we're no longer friends. So here's another question. Okay, I already know the answer to it because do you exclusively recruit from inside? Also, does president oversee every member that joins? Thank you. Respect. I'll let you answer that, of course. Okay, say that again. Do you re exclusively recruit from the inside? Also, does the president oversee every member that joins? Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, first of all, we're not into recruitment. You know, we're not part of the military. So we don't use recruitment tactics. If somebody wants to become a member of, of the rider movement, then they have to seek embracement. Thus, you know, it's contrary to recruitment. Um, and no, it's not exclusively in prison. But they're like, uh, I'm sure you're aware, Flacco, there's a lot of compadres of mine that have never even been to prison. Yeah. Um, you know, if a person wants to become a member, they seek embracement Babe. by... Uh, approaching, you 
know, uh, certified members yeah. of the movement, letting them know that they're interested. And so when that happens, the person uh, has to okay, get to know this guy, no, and he has to have two no, people that are no, advocating no, 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 no. for him. This one now it is. You know, it's a very rigorous process. Okay, so we have many, many members become members Mommy, on the street. You put your food there. Okay, so so we got let's see. Okay, I got a couple questions, but I can only get to so many guys. I'm trying to do the best I can. Well, but also, the answer is I'm not avoiding the question. Uh, as, as the president, <laughs> no, no, I don't oversee. You know who becomes a culpa. You know, but I do eventually encounter these guys. You know. Okay, someone said, "Ask Snoop, is he aware of a crip from Sacramento named Donnie Jefferson?" Star of YouTube and is saying he knocked out Snoop and took his brother's car a long time ago. Yeah, that's complete shenanigans, man. I'm not even going to add. Anybody from Sacramento knows that that dude's fucking delusional. So I'm not even going to waste my time even talking about no crap like that. Mm -hmm. I defecate on people like that. Just a freaking bum. Mm -hmm. Someone said, Flocks. This, okay, I already know this question because you, you're very passionate about this. Flacco, can you ask Snoop if he ever sees a time where he would step back from his movement? Do I ever see a time that I can uh, step back from my movement? Let me answer that. Uh, no. Absolutely not. I'm, 40, I'm 48 years old. I literally just turned 48. And I can tell you like this. I established this movement 23 years ago. So that within itself should be, uh, you know, uh, demonstrative in the fact that I'm all about commitment. I pledge my allegiance to honor and uphold the sanctity of writer law. I live by it. I breathe it. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't see that ever happening. Okay, so someone there? keeps on asking, um, well, a friend of mine keeps on asking if you knew uh, Rob, Rob Shamrock. Who? Rob Shamrock. I don't know Rob Shamrock, but I've met Ken Shamrock and I've met Frank Shamrock, who's his brother by adoption. They had a dojo in Napa Valley as well as uh, Susanville, of all places, believe it or not. So, someone asked, have you ever fought any NF members or MA members? Have I ever fought who? Fought any NF or MA members? Uh, yeah, I beat the crap out of a uh, couple NF members. As far as Mexican Mafia, no. You know, it's ironic. I've always gotten along with Mexican Mafia. Hmm. You know, it's as sad as it is to say. You know, I've spent a lot of time in solitary confinement. So, you know, doing time in the shoe, I've met some of these members of Mexican Mafia, and actually we got along really well. You know, they yeah. were uh, business-oriented, okay. as, as am I. So uh, we always saw eye to eye, you know, which is one of the reasons why I knew that I needed to create something for my generation, you know. What else? Okay. Yeah, because someone said that you fought Pla Playa from uh C from Central. Who? Playa from Central. Playa from Central. What about him? They said you, they said you beat him up. Who who knows that? Yeah, that's Robert. That's Robert Copeland. He was a C. But let me tell you this though. I will tell you this. I want everybody to know. Robert Copeland is completely with the business. Mm. That dude is no punk, and he knew I was gonna fuck him up. And he still came out. He came out to the yard like a grown man, and he accepted his ass whooping. But he tried to fight back, but I knocked his teeth through his lips. You know, I knocked his teeth through his mustache. But uh, he was no punk, man. Yeah. I give him props. We got players from Central, Robert Copeland. Uh, I believe he was the NF, but he might have been NF, or he was aspiring to become NF. That's but that, yeah, I, I obliterated him. That's what someone said. 
What other questions? Let's get into some of the questions that they asked prior to me coming on. So I can answer this. I want Man, to it's, it's they're, they're so it's, they're so way back there. You mean? Um, what happened? You, uh, your cousin said that dude was NF. Did Snoop ever meet? Uh, let me see. Uh, Draco the Ruler. This call is being recorded. Who have you Who have you met since you were in LA County Jail? Anybody famous? Uh, yeah, I fucking met this dude, uh, Harvey Weinstein. Oh. I went to court with Harvey Weinstein. Mm. He's pretty famous. He's a sexual deviant, so they say. So he killed himself. Oh, I think that they're giving him a bad rap. I think it's it's pretty terrible what he's going through. Isn't he dead? Come again? I thought he killed himself. No, no, Harvey Weinstein. No, you're thinking of you're thinking of the dude that got busted with Donald Trump. Well, that's did, huh? <laughs> I got him mixed up. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 same, that that hey, same type of same type of weird shit, right? <laughs> okay, so he was in there with you. The dude that got busted with that chick, Jocelyn Maxwell. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm talking about that creep. Oh, okay, the movie Harvey producer. He was a director and a producer in Hollywood. He oh, yeah. He started the Me Too movement. Mm. What other questions? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Somebody asked me, too. Somebody asked. I mean, they ask so many questions, bro. You don't get it. Mob guy, we're going to get to that question later on. That's going to be a whole story. Somebody asked me what I like to cook, so I wanted to answer that question real oh, you, quick. Yeah, answer that. Yeah, some of my favorite meals in the packages, they have these boxes called pastoroni. And pastoroni are, are basically, um, it's, it's pasta that you can boil. So they have rigatoni alfredo, they have linguine parmesan, and so I like getting that. I'll I'll, um, I'll boil, you know, the pasta, and then I'll add, you know, either chicken or I'll add uh, shrimp, um, you know, different, um, uh, you know, spices, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite meals right there. Nineties YA baby, he answered that before he is. They asked about Siete if he's certified. I said, yeah. You, you brought that up before. Okay. Uh, let me see. Also, Roman Pulaski, another true snack. Hey, man, excuse me that I'm eating, guys. I'm hungry, so I'm eating a little something. But a couple people said that was okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, enjoy yourself. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm humanized. I'm only human, guys, man. I'm hungry. I'm trying to eat chicken right now on the live and shit. Fucking looking funny. What kind of chicken you eat? Man, just some regular chicken. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, wife made it for me. Oh, that's what's up, man. That's awesome. But I just, my wife cooks too. Oh yeah, man. When's the last time you had a? My, wife, my wife gets down in that kitchen. So when she comes home from work, she has she's the first thing she does. So she goes and washes her hand, washes her face, puts her hair up in a bun, and you know, puts her apron on. You know, and starts getting down in that kitchen. So you you, some magic. you got family visits, right? When you were uh. Prior to catching this case, right? You know what's unfortunate? I have been incarcerated for 19 years. And I still have yet to get a family visit because I can't stay out of the damn hole, man. It's unfortunate, but every time I get out the shoe, I'm only on the yard for, you know, maybe four to six months so before I end up. Getting into a situation that results in, you know, great bodily injury. It's very unfortunate. So I don't so know. No, I, I haven't had any family visits. I don't know if this is a family member, but someone said Gil Garcia said that's what he thinks. Ha! Huh? She ain't be. She ain't doing all that. <laughs> what happened? Do you know someone named Gil Garcia? Gil Garcia? Yeah. Never heard of him. Mm. Yes. But shout out to my wife though. I love you, baby. I know you're listening right now. We're, as well as my son. Hey, Zilla, we're, you, we're not going to touch on that right now. This call is being recorded. <laughs> you know you know what your cousin just asked you? What did he ask? He said, ask Snoop, when did he realize his mental health was off? When did I realize my mental health 
was on? Yeah. Um, probably when I was a kid, man, I knew that I was different. You know, I knew that I was different. You know, they 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 diagnosed me with um, ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. At the age of five, they um, prescribed me a medication called Ritalin. It yeah. kind of had like an adverse effect on me. Oh, is that right? So I've always been very energetic and, you know, I couldn't really pay attention. And, uh, my mind, you know, raced. And so I had all these thoughts in my mind. But yeah, it just made me different, man. Okay, here, here's a good question. Did Snoop get stabbed by, by Zoom? Did I get stabbed by who? Zoom. Z-O-O-M. No, that's a lie. Whoever heard that, that's a lie. Let me see. You know, people got to understand because of my notoriety and because of my, uh, you know, the infamous nature of my reputation, um, there's going to always be people that come up with these fictitious stories about encountering me or knowing me or fighting me or stabbing me or beating me up or attacking me. And, and I'll, be, I'll be straight up and honest with you. You know, 99% is complete, utter bullshit. Mm. You know, people try to fit themselves in the equation. A lot of these guys are nobodies, you know. Um, I can tell you this, and I'll, and I'll let the viewers and the listeners know, there will never, ever be a time where anybody can produce any paperwork indicating battery on me. I've never been a victim of circumstance. Every time I've been engaged in battle, it's always been me stepping to the plate. It's always been me coming to their yards. You know, they, they, you know it's ironic because a lot of these guys say that I was on their bad news list or their hit list and, you know, they wanted to harm me or hurt me or kill me or maim me or attack me. But it was me going out of my way to go to their yard. And, you know, here I am today. So, it's not that I'm Bruce Willis, mm. you know, but I, I, I can't tell you this. I'm not an easy win. Mm. <laughs> That's for certain. Let's see. What was the question? I had a couple people who got me about you. About you uh, they wanted to see, uh, uh, you know, more. In, what do you think? Of, what do you think is the best thing to, to save our communities, our neighborhoods out there in the streets, bro? Someone was asking about how can we stop all the, uh, uh, you know, basically the things that are going out through the streets, you know, the negativity. All uh, you know what I mean? What's your opinion on that? That's a very good question, but it's also a very broad question. So yeah, exactly. There's, you know, many nuances in how people can go about um, bringing these communities together. I can say one thing though: in order to do that. Um, anybody who's going to, you know, talk to the youth, a person has, has to, you know, come from that life. You can't have somebody that's coming from a church, you know, T.D. Jakes or, or Joel Osteen, for instance, they're not going to be able to go to a neighborhood and suddenly, you know, think they're going to, you know, reform, you know, these communities because, you know, the youth, they're not going to listen to that crap. They want to listen to somebody who comes from the same background and the same upbringing, you know, that, that can talk that talk because they live that struggle. Um, I, I realized that. This call is being recorded. You know, when I was growing up, you know, I used to have to walk miles in order to get to the Washington Center. You know, we have to have. Uh, community centers that kids in the neighborhood can go to so where, where we can provide structure, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, you know? You know, say, um, say you I get out... Be a hypocrite. So, so, so what, what, what would you do if you see the kids out there in your neighborhood, right? Or wherever you move. And you see these youngsters messing up 10, 11 years old. What type of approach would you, would, would you take with them? Um, that's a... What, what, what are you? What are you asking? So you have to ask that all 
all over again. So basically, if you see some like like you know, a 10 year old, 11 year old kid in the neighborhood, you know, their, their dad's not there, or whatever, they're going through some shit, their mom's out there on dope, and you see them fucking up. What type of advice would you give to them out there? It's, it's, a, it's a real you know, one, though. I look at myself when, when I was that age. Yeah. There's nobody that can tell me anything. You know, as far as advice, um, man, it's, you know, it's a sad situation, but, um, wow. It is, huh? That's, that's a hard I, one, huh? Because, yeah, yeah I, I, it's, a very, I, it's a very arduous question, man. I'd have to ponder that. I might come up with something spontaneous, but I don't want to say something that just sounds good. Okay. I have to look at you know the circumstances. Okay, we've had know? we've had about five or seven people ask the same question. They, they've been asking about what do you know about SIBO and X rated? Oh, uh, SIBO is actually a good friend of mine. Okay. His name is Sean Thomas, and I actually grew up with him. Uh, you know what's interesting is that him and I fought. Him and I fought in in juvenile hall when I was thirteen years old. Um. Uh, but you and I became friends, man. Um, Widow Duran. Yeah, he's actually a pretty, pretty good friend of mine. He he did his um his record release party for uh, I believe it was called Mob Father at my brother uh, Mongol's club called the Z Bar. Yeah. So yeah, we know each other very well. For me, I see you. So, okay, Big Widow Duran, he super chatted, come on this good or more. Big Widow Duran, what do you what mean? Happened? No, uh, uh, Big, Big Widow Duran, he super chatted, he super chatted this, so I'm trying to figure out what he's asking. Come on, this is good or more. What? He has to ask his question in English. Let me see. Now, Big Widow Duran is a homie right there. Let me see. Uh... Sebo had sadly. I met Sebo. Sebo's dad's with the action, bro. That's a beast right there. Sebo's uh, dad. He's a fucking beast, bro. He's a he was a validated Jama, bro. Oh, Jama's a Rebo. Yeah, I'm a fuckers with that action, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. His dad's fucking. He's, uh, he, I know Sarebo real well. Someone said, "Do you still talk to your brother?" Yeah, absolutely. Talk to my brother. Yeah, almost every day. Okay. I send my Snoop Power. Someone said I send my Snoop Power things in the LA County Jail. What happened? Okay, Farmetto super chatted. He said, "Ask Snoop if the NR never existed. Does he think he would have remained in North Daniel? If you would have started your movement, he wants to know: Would you have remained in North Daniel? You think?" Um, no. The honest answer is no. It's interesting that that you ask that because that's a very good question. I realized that the Nathaniel struggle wasn't for me when I um, read the, the format. And in the format, towards the end, one of the last paragraphs, it states that our main objective is to establish a strong foothold in all pintas where one will be able to this call is being recorded. The PITA has to offer such as education, vocation, and other essentials required for our future goals and accomplishments. Now, as good as that might sound, <coughs> these guys are doing contrary to that. So, me, as a young man, I'm all about demonstrative actions. You have to demonstrate and show me that you stand for what you say you believe in. And because I'm seeing that a lot of these guys don't, I have a problem with that. However, if you tell me that your main objective, thus meaning that your cause and struggle is aspiring toward establishing a strong foothold in all pintas, dude, I don't really give a shit about that. I've always had a fuck prison mentality. Prison doesn't represent me. Nor does prison define the essence of who I am as a man. Yeah. So I, I had a problem with that. So I brought that to the attention of the guy who 
who was educating, you know, us on the fundamentals of this warped belief system. Now, I'm not saying that to besmirch anyone. Any soldiers of the North End, I've met many good ones. Oh, okay. They stand up dudes. Okay. So I'm not attempting to belittle or, you know, assassinate the characters of those guys. I'm just saying that I realized that that just wasn't for me. Okay. He so said, I wanted to create something new. He said generation. He said generation gap. There, there. When I say North Daniel, it would be the equivalent of Northerner back then. I meant, if they didn't push education on Northerners and North Daniels, would you still be active? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Okay, that's interesting. Big Weddle, man, you're gonna leave, yeah, bro? 100%. Why, why do you want me to hang up on Snoop? He super chatted me, tell me, man, Big Weddle's my homie, but he's telling me better hang up. Then he said later, man. It's, it's the homie about uh, Big Weddle. He's, hey, I bet you you're having a good time though, man. I'll, I'll call you. In a, I'll call you when I'm done, Weddle. Let me see. That's a good question, Farm Metal. You know, that's you know what that that that, that was good. that was really good uh, uh a good question right there because uh yeah you know I, I misinterpreted uh what his question was so. Cool. Yeah, because you were never like. I thought he was asking something else, but yeah, absolutely. Education was kind of optional for people back then, man. I mean, but that's the thing. I want people to understand that I've always been about education. I just don't want to be educated on some prison bullshit. You know, I've always, you know, read, you know, Napoleon Hill, you know, Think and Grow Rich, or The Power of Persuasion, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, 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 Aristotle and. In Plato's Republic and yeah, I read all those too. This call is being recorded. I've always been into you know uh, uh, Greek philosophy. Okay, I've good. always been into psychology, Carl Jung and and Sigmund Freud. You know, I've always I've always educated myself. So we got a, we got another good question, man. It's, uh, from Macramento, he says feelings about people that disrespect the sacrifices of the original NF. I Me and you know a couple original NFs personally. Okay, hold on. Let me fix this thing right here. Oh, I'm trying to fix my... Oh, it says, someone said, your feelings about disrespecting the sacrifices of the original... Not you in general, but people that dis disrespect the sacrifices of the original NF. Yeah, most I hear what you're saying. Taking away from any man who has, you know, made, you know, taken the initiative to 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 make sacrifices. You know, people need to understand that one of my good friends, who was actually one of my one of my uh, few mentors in the prison system, was you know an NS member. You know, his name was his name was Hobo. Yeah. And I, and I really liked this dude's get down. And he was a dropout. And he was letting me know. He was walking on the main line yard, had an NS tattooed on his right uh, shoulder. You know, he was letting me know. Yeah, I'm an I'm a, I'm a NS dropout. But, but, but I still represent the North End. You know, and he was self sufficient. He turned and stuff, you know, uh, you know in, in a very humble manner. Yeah, he would go with.
you know, it took it to assassinate my character. You know? Any, it's away from the many sacrifices that I've made. Is there any, so I don't know if somebody was saying that in retrospect to that. So is there any compass from Fresno? Absolutely. Okay. I have many compass from Fresno. Matter of fact, shout out to my compadre Jesse out there in Fresno. I got a company boxer from Fresno as well, who's been a friend of mine for many years. A phone stabilizer? Yeah, I gotta get one of those guys. You're right. I, that? When I do these, when I do these lives, I hold the I phone, I hold the phone in my hand the whole time. You know what I mean? This is your stand, Playboy. I, you know what? I had one, man. It just broke. What the hell are you doing? A lot of interviews. That's what's up. King twenty four. He says, "So Louis Compa." So it has to be 4AR, 2016, 2017. Saludos to Snoops, Sergio, Blanco, Bubba, Biggie. He said, thanks. He said, thank you, Flacco. What happened? What happened? Hold on. What happened? What happened? What happened? 4AR, 2016, 2017. Saludos to Snoops, Sergio, Blanco, Bubba, and Biggie. With respects, That's thanks, Flacco. Up, man. That, was, that, that was part of the Playboy committee right there. Mm. Who's that? He said he put Fifi something. Who? Hold on. I'll tell you right now. Those are my goons right there. I think it's Flacco, or is he telling my squad? Was there a Flacco there too? Who? A Flacco or no? Yeah, he told me Flacco was my boy from uh from Berkeley. I think that's who it was. Yeah, he's not a goal, but that's my boy right there, man. He's a uh he's a tattoo artist. Okay. Too. Now, I don't think he's actually kicking in, he, he's kicking in my area. Hmm. I guess you could call him a friend of the fellas, man. He was a good dude. You never smoked, huh? The not holes or nothing, huh? No, I don't smoke cigarettes. Okay. I think that's disgusting. Hmm. Not that I have a problem with it. I'll smoke it one right now. I think it's a nasty habit. It is, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. I could, I could. I, I mean, but you, but you, you don't smoke in your house. You step out of your house, and when you smoke. Yeah, and I washed up right after, too. Yeah, absolutely. Usually. You know what I mean? You don't walk around smell like a freaking ashtray. Okay, Mike. Michael said, can you ask Snoop how much addiction plays in betrayal and the destruction of the Northern movement? As someone who was in the streets for years, the only the only true law homeboys were the ones never used. You know what's a trip, but that's a very good question. I can honestly attest to the fact that I can't say, maybe you can, you can, uh, you can expound on this, Michael. I don't. I've never seen addiction play a role in you know the controversy and and, and, and chaos that ensued within the North Daniel struggle. It was never really about addiction. So you know, I, I can honestly attest to that. Addiction really had nothing to do with it. And that's not to say that there weren't a lot of drug addicts, because there were a lot of the. And that's members that I've encountered were a bunch of drug addicts. But it never, you know, got in the way of their uh, uh, performance of duties, I guess you can say. Um, from, uh, from my perspective of, of the issues that transpired, it was more so uh, power struggles. It was like the, um, you know, the, the the aspiration of power, of who wanted to be in charge and who wanted to, you know, dictate the lives of others, is what really uh, created a lot of turmoil within the struggle. Someone said, "Who was the hardest North Daniel you've met?" Oh man, I've met many hard North Daniels. It's not good at this construed, man. You know, I, I can honestly say that, you know, the North Daniels are some of the uh, most organized, uh, uh, you know, soldiers. This call is being recorded. So I can't say who is the hardest because I've met many hard North Daniels, you know. Someone said Porky from Central. Uh, knocked uh, players' teeth 
to his lips. As a matter of fact, they were trying to remove Porky because, uh, you know, he ran his own program like, like, like any man should. And uh, I wasn't going for it. I let everybody know that uh, no one is going to do anything to Porky. Pretty, pretty decent dude. I know, his, I know his younger brother. His younger brother is probably around six, seven years older than me. Did Snoop used to rap? Yeah, I used to rap. <laughs> yeah, I used to. So the Smiley, Smiley was I'm rapping too back then. What's up? I remember, I remember Smiley used to rap too. Yep. Yeah, Smiley's hard. Smiley's hard. Matter of fact, Smiley did um did some music with Black and Brown. He was running around with uh Black and Brown Entertainment out there in San Francisco. Did someone say he's, he's a strong coming out. He said he's still pushy, he's still doing well. They said Porky. Did anyone else? Did anyone? So someone's gonna comment. Did anyone else from Broderick follow you as as writers? Someone said sleep. Writers, Broderick is probably around 75, 80% writers out there right now. Yeah. There's about maybe 30 writers out there in Broderick right now. Someone said more. someone said sleepy uh, sleepy Zapatas Park Central Sacra. Sleepy from Zapata Park? Yeah. Sleepy, uh, uh, he, he used to fight over there at um, Washington Center. There's also another Sleepy named um, um, uh, Mike Gomez. Mike Gomez okay. with the business, too. Matter of fact, Mike, if that's Mike Gomez, I remember Mike Gomez called me out. I remember he had parole for YA, and, and he was no punk. He was bigger than me. I was taller than him, but he had a slow zone. And I remember he was like looking me up and sizing me up. Like, yeah, I think I can whip Snoop's ass now. I remember I had to teach him a lesson. <laughs> he was no punk, though. He was not no punk. Is there any writers from Oakland? This call is being recorded. What's up? Any writers from Oakland? Is Soldier Boy is Soldier Boy a, a writer now? Soldier Boy from where? Oakland. Uh, I, I have no idea. I don't think so. Okay. So, how many siblings does Snoop have? He mentioned one brother. Uh, I got a bunch of brothers. Okay. I got a bunch of brothers I've never met. Someone, someone's just said, uh, said they send theirs. They're from uh, Tango. He's stone. Who? Someone's, uh, they said, what's up, Snoop? Sending my love from Tango. He's stone from Houston. The Tango Blast. Oh, okay. That's what's up, man. I sent my regards out there to Texas. You ever, met, you ever met any Tango Blasts? Who? Yeah, have you ever met a Tango Blast? That's a group in Texas that kind of went against the uh, the the the, FAMAS, the, the, uh, the organizations over there in Texas. Oh, they went against the Texas Syndicate and the Texas MA and all those other groups. Oh, okay, that's what's up. It's I send mine out there to you in solidarity. Like minds think alike. Okay, someone said who was ringing. Have to remember that. Who was ringing bells when you got to Nellis? I was surprised. 
surprised because there was a kid from 18th Street named Babyface. And I remember at OH Close, he was just a little young punk. He was just a kid. Now, don't, don't get me misconstrued. I mean, he was with it, but he was just a little kid. But when he ended up in Nellis, you know, he had grown up a little bit. Yeah. So he was putting in a lot of work. Remember the guys from 18th Street? Also, there was dudes from Pacoima. I remember a dude named, um, uh, it was either, I believe it was, not, I believe it was Creeper from Pacoima, uh, Project Boys. Okay. He was with it. Yeah, there was a bunch of down Sudanians, man. Most definitely. I can name a whole list of them that were with it. Okay. Who's your top five rappers? Top five rappers, I would say number one as far as lyricists, the notorious B.I.G. I don't think that anybody had the ability to, uh, you know, a lyrical genius like him. A second would be Nas, you know, although, you know, he's conscious aware, you know, he's, he has, you know, he puts, you know, conscientious uh, uh, terms and, and uh, you know, whatnot in his rap. So a lot of people, you know, don't like that. I would say uh, third would have to be, um, um, hmm. I have to give it up for SIBO, definitely, as far as underground's concerned. Um, I also like uh, that kid from, uh, from Compton, What's his name? The 400 dude, uh, YG. Thank, I think thank YG you. doesn't get enough credit as he should because he's all over the place right now. And he's super rich and he's business oriented. And then fifth would be, um, oh, I'd have to say that dude from uh, G Parkway. Okay. What's his name? What's that dude from G Parkway? I'm not sure. He's the guy that doesn't like Quasi. Yeah. No, I'm not too sure. Uh, uh. Oh, Lavish D. Oh, CML, yeah. I got to give it up to Lavish I like, I like Lavish C- all over the place. Okay, so, so we got a super chat from Frankie. Appreciate it, man. Hey, appreciate all the super chats we got. Is there Compas in Merced? Is there Compas in Merced? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we got a whole crew out there. Shout out to the Copa compound out there in Merced, out there in Sherlock. This call is being recorded. Yeah, shout out to all the Copas out there, man. You see Mel go hard. Yeah, my Copa little Nico's out there. My Copa Lucky. You know, we got a friend of the fellas, uh, Turtles out there. Uh, uh, oh, that's a good question. Oh, see when it's out there. This, this is a good Copa question. Ant, he's out there running around. Copa Rex. Yeah, you better watch out up there in Merced. So, okay, someone asked, I got got enough to do Snoop Nose, Whack 100, or Big U. They always talk crazy about their prison and YA stuff. What's their names? Whack 100 and Big U. Uh, I know who Big U is because Big U is a factor within the Crip uh, community. He actually. Uh, He's, he's who, uh, uh, you know, brought a lot of uh, entrepreneurial shit within the community. So he does a lot of good. He's, yeah. he's heavy in the rap scene. Uh, WAC 100, I've never met him, but I do know that um, he's in the scene as well. Yeah, he is. WAC 100, went by, county jail. WAC 100 went by Cash Jones. He was a pyro. WAC 100 and YA went by uh, Cash Jones. He's a Pyro. Uh, yeah, like I said, but he, he wasn't, he, he's not anybody that I knew. He's okay. not a name that I ever heard of. Okay, EBK, EBK Family. Okay, EBK Family says if you want his number, he'll give it to you for me to give it to you. So I can do that. Okay, okay. I'm going to tap back in real quick for a few minutes. Okay. I'll call you back. All right. Thank you for using GTL. Man, favorite ramen flavor, huh? 
He'll call back right now. I'm about to put it on mute, guys. Let me see. WAC 100 is working with the feds. Pluto Planet Mars, local astronaut killer. <laughs> No Mac Dre Snoop. Oh man, I got hit. I think I get hit by mosquitoes. Hold on, guys. Yep, the homies, the homies said thanks for the shout out. I just got a message from one of them. Hey, before I continue, I'm oh, yeah, hold on. Uh, I have, I, 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 most definitely. Okay, what are you saying? That's nothing, man. Um, the the homies send theirs that you the okay, shout out. Up, you know what I mean? Anyways, we're gonna we're not gonna go too much longer. I'll let let Stu close this up with you guys real quick, and then um. um how many how many people are on live right now? There's two sixty five right now. Okay, that's what's up, man. And I want to uh, send a shout out to all the listeners, all the viewers. Uh, thank you once again for you know your your uh, positivity. Your, your support, you know, I, I appreciate the interest. Um, for those who haven't purchased my book, Basic Fundamentals of the Game, there should be a link. Um, do so. It's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Okay, most definitely. I'll, pro I'll probably post the link up again. Um, we tried to do this time. Any, so more, any more questions? There's a whole. There's all. anybody out. You know what? There's there are always going to be a couple people. The, the questions come in fast, brother. I can't get to all of them. Put it that way. Okay. Um, but you know what? We're going to tap in on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to chop it up with Snoop a little bit off off camera right now. So you guys all have a good one. We appreciate you guys chopping in, man. Well, every Wednesday and Sunday so far is how we're going to do it. Two lives a week. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate you. We appreciate, we appreciate the support. You know what I mean? And um, stay tuned for the next live. You guys all have a good one. Absolutely. Hold on.